Hey everybody, welcome back to the Chaotic Little Book Corner. My name's Acacia. Today I'm going to be doing my September part two book haul. Blah, 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 blah. Shouldn't do it. Blah, 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 blah. Mistake. Blah, 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 blah. Not sorry. Hashtag. Ta! Okay, now we're going to jump into the books. For those of you who are wondering, I do have makeup on. I felt like getting fancy today because... I felt like getting fancy today. You guys can finally see like how thin my poor hair is. It's pretty thin. Pretty fine hair. It's okay. Okay. We're all different. I just have super blonde girl hair. Anyways. I can't believe how much highlighter I put on. Okay. So, book number one will be in my September part one wrap-up. This is Pond. I purchased this for a buddy read with Amanda Center, and I really enjoyed it. And I will be giving you more update on that with the next video or two, somewhere in this week. And then we have this disclaimer. Okay, for all of you who are aware that I am trying to, to really diversify my shelves with hashtag Black Writers Matter, I have found it very, very difficult to find several, like to find Black writers or books from Black writers that I really, really wanted on my, well, not that I really, really wanted, that I even, I just, I, I've, I've now purchased so many books from Black writers or been trying to find them that I've, I've come to this place where like, I just don't know what else to buy. And so there is a new goal I'm setting for myself, which is still to find writers that are not usually given attention and love. I am just trying to diversify my shelf as far as gender, um, sexual orientation and race versus my normal, which is a either female or male author who is white, middle class or upper class, sadly. Um, so I'm really trying to find the stories that I can find out there that are different and not usually put on mine or other shelves. So I'm trying to keep the diversity on this channel extremely vast, but it's proving more difficult than I thought. So I am actively trying and I'm working very hard on it. If you'd like me to do a video on how I'm actively working on it and what kind of research I'm doing, let me know down in the comments below and I'll be happy to do so. This is Jean Rye's Wide Sargasso Sea. This is a spinoff of Jane Eyre and it is talking about Bertha and her story prior and after her marriage to Rochester. Very, very curious and excited about this. I did purchase this from a books. It arrived in really good condition except for the fact that there was unfortunately a dead insect on there. If you're curious about it, go to my Instagram. I'll link it down below. They are actually though sending me a replacement copy free of charge and allowing me to keep this. I don't know what to do with the copy with a bug. Not really sure. <laughs> Next, we have this. This is Roll Doll Madness. This is Tales of Fe Fear and Unreason. It is a short story collection. I have begun it. I am loving it. I loved Roll Doll as a child. Matilda was one of my favorites, as well as James and the Giant Peach. And I really wanted to read books from him that were a little bit more dark and deep because I feel like there's this this niche that he falls into which is a child writer and I can definitely tell you that from what I've understood his his world and his his experience in life was not the easiest route so I absolutely believe that I should be picking up this as well as the other three books in the collection which are Lust, Deception, and Cruelty to kind of learn a little bit more about what Roald Dahl went through in his life outside of the fairy tales that he so wonderfully wrote for us. This is Notes on a Scandal by Zoe Zoe Heller. This is, if I'm correct, this is a story of obsession and lust and love and intrigue and deception. So I'm very excited to read this and it's in the Penguin Ink edition. So of course when I saw it I picked it up. It came in less than exciting like stance. Like it's definitely a well-loved book but it does have plastic around it so it's well kept together. From the library binding. This is Alice Walker's 
color purple. I have picked this up to Buddy Read with Amanda Center as well as I have picked this up because it's something that I've always wanted to have on my shelf and I did have it on my shelf at one point but I read it in a class where very clearly not myself but one of my alters did read it and they pretty much destroyed it with notes that I didn't want to see because they were kind of aggressive. So they were not aggressive in the way that they were dissecting the book in, in any bad terms. They were just very very much reliving our trauma through this book and so I didn't feel like I wanted to experience the book with that much hatred and anger from somebody who I've now come to peace with and that was really my main goal was to just find it and plus this cover I've never seen it before and I kind of love it kind of adore it next we have this this is Henrik I I Ibison, A Doll's House, and Other Plays. This is the Penguin edition. I actually ordered two The Doll House editions of this play. One is just the play, one is this and other plays. So, do, 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 do. this one is translated by Peter Watts. So, I'm very excited. I've begun the play and I've very much enjoyed it. And I do know that Hannah Tay recommends this and so does Amanda Center. So, obviously, it's made it to my list and they were both really cheap versions, so I liked both covers, so I got both covers. Here's crossing my fingers that I like the book. Next, we have this, which is I Am Mala Malala, the girl who stood for up for education and was shot by the Taliban. I have watched the film, I have listened to the audible, but I never purchased it, and I felt really bad because that is the best way to give your approval and, like, of support is to give... The information that you are actually buying it and giving it attention. So obviously this needed to be on my shelf anyway because it is such an important book and such an important feminist piece of literature and education and all of those things and diversity. So I'm very happy to have that now. Next we have this. This is The Knife Drawer and this is by Padrika Torrent and this I'm very excited about. It is a fairy tale madness sort of re- imagining and it just looks like it's going to be weird and awkward and dark and whew, all the things that I love. So I've definitely picked this up. I picked it up as a used copy. It is in pretty fair condition. The binding of it is, well, first of all, it's from a library. So there's actually damage on the inside from where the library card was. Sad face. But otherwise, it is in really good condition and I'm very happy with it. A lot of you guys have asked me, like, how do I buy so many books because I don't have money, really, <laughs> aside from what I do get to kind of support myself in a general way. And the way that I do that, if you guys want me to make a video more in depth about it, I am absolutely willing to. Um, and just let me know in the comments below. But um, for the most part, I just buy used books. Um, and when I buy a full price book, I buy it. Well, let me rephrase that. When I buy a new book, I buy it with coupons. Um, so I actually do 98% of my shopping online. 98% of the shopping that I do online is for used books. And then I get um, cash back for what I do. And I use the cash back to pay for new books. That's how I do that. I don't know if that's even interesting to you guys. <laughs> this is Tipping the Velvet by Sarah Waters. This is my first Sarah Waters, and this is in the edition that goes with the collection that I have already one of, which is Slammer Skin by Emma Donahue. I love this edition size. These, I believe, are stories about women coming of age. The only other one that I really want is I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings Why by Maya Angelou. Other than that, I can't say I'm going to pick the rest of them up, but they just look really pretty. They're very pink and beautiful, and I mean, Virago really kind of knows what they're doing. And yes, again, a library book. Lots of library markings, but I am okay with it at this moment. This is Humanly. I found this finally. It took me a really long time to find this one. Um, this is by Stevie Edwards. It is a poetry collection which is based around confronting the ideas of living with mental illnesses, um, living with mental illnesses, past sexual trauma, dis dislocation of yourself, grief, and chronic looming of psychiatric wards. This I'm really, really excited about. I'm very happy that I finally picked it up. It was a gift to myself because I'd seen it for a while and there was no way I was going to find it in a clearance area, so I had to wait until I could get it in a full price scenario. Usually 
I have coupons and such, but that one, not going to be a coupon area, but I really didn't want it to be because it's supporting someone very important. This one finally arrived. This is the release date, actually, of where I am now. True Stories of a Girlhood and Accidental Fame by Mara Wilson. You guys know this face. If you don't, you need to go watch A Simple Wish. Miracle on 34th Street, Mrs. Doubtfire, and Matilda, among others. And I am so grateful and so excited to have this. I pre-ordered this, but... If I'm correct, my sister is going to the launch as well. We both grew up with Mara, so we really, really, really love her. And my sister is living in the um, Boston area, and I think Harvard Book Store is having her come today and sign books. And my sister, if I'm correct, is getting me a signed copy. If that is the case, this book will be going up for giveaway here on my channel because I purchased it and I want to share the love with you guys. And I would want my signed edition, but I wouldn't want a second edition that was just sitting here on my shelf being unread. So I'm not going to touch this or open it until I know whether or not I have the signed edition, which I'll know by Saturday. If I do have the signed edition, this will be going up for giveaway next week. You can look forward to that. Then there's this. I can't remember if I've already hauled this or not, but who knows? This is... I. Okay, listen. I know I could go back and watch my other hauls, and I did but I don't remember what I watched. I remember everybody else's video, but my own videos somehow just seem to not stay in memory. I should probably look into that with the disassociation, shouldn't I? Mm. All right, how does that make you feel? True confessions from both sides of the therapy couch, and this is edited by Sherry M. Ammenstein, Amenst and this is a collection of essays, short stories from different patients and psychologists talking about their experience in the psychiatric field, as well as their relationship as patient and psychiatrist. I'm very excited about that. I've been in and out of the psychiatric world since I was about six, so I've had some experiences. All right, so this is the joys of having alters. I apparently two of my parts entered giveaways and they won two giveaways this month. One of them being this. This is a storm, the sequel to H2O by Virginia Bergen. I am keeping this because my part that requested it for the giveaway and won it is actually very excited to read it. It is a dystopian YA talking about a deathly rain. I don't know. They're very excited about it, so I'm gonna let them have it. That would be Mac. This one is Someone Gets in Your Smoke Gets in Your Eyes and Other Lessons from the Crematorium by Kate Caitlin Dowdy, and I am very excited about this. Amanda Center recommended it to me. She couldn't part with her own copy, of course, because she loves it, so of course I had to go out and buy a copy because I got really excited and I bought it from my local bookshop and I ordered it through them actually and because of that I did get a discount which was really nice. I got 35% off of the market price which is how I usually buy most of my books if I order them um, in the store because if I'm buying them online I'm buying them because they're in a special edition or they're a UK edition. If I'm buying them in store, it's because I know that I can get them from that store, but they just have to order it and then they take 35 off of the original price tag or market price, I should say. And so, yes, this is all very complicated. Again, if you want me to talk about how I buy my books, let me know in the comments below and I'll make a full video on it because I'm going to stop rambling about it anyway. Um, this one I'm really excited about. So it's about a crematorium and lives and stuff like that so it's described as demonically funny and I'm down next my mom and I had a spa day and she saw this in the local bookshop that we were at and she said do you want it and I said yes please and she picked it up for me and it is a first edition signed copy of After Alice by Gregory McGuire I have seen nothing but bad reviews about this and so I want to read it and see how it goes it's Alice Next, Miss Amanda Center sent me a few lovely books. One of them is her copy, but I already owned a copy, so I've now taken my copy off of the shelf and I've put it in a pile for her when she arrives in November, but I'm keeping the copy that is her original copy. If she'd like it the other way around, it's all good, but I already owned it. This one, though, I did not 
this one I could not find in any used copies or editions that I really loved and I really wanted this one but I just couldn't I couldn't bring myself to purchase it for some gosh forsaken reason I don't know why this is John Connolly the book of lost things Amanda said she enjoyed it liked it but didn't need it on her shelf so she sent my cop sent me her copy and I'm so grateful she and I have been exchanging books a lot lately. This is Foreign Soil by Maxine Benaba Clark, and this is a collection of short stories that I found on Mercedes' channel. This is from a woman who lives in Australia. I believe she is Afro-Caribbean, and this is her short story collection. She's come out with another book recently that I would like to get my hands on as well, but this one I finally got my hands on at a decent price since it is from Australia. Goodness gracious. Then this I found finally in the edition that I wanted, and I'm so excited. I love Edgar Allan Poe. Love it. My favorite poem of all time is Annabelle Lee. I think it is gorgeous and dark and gloomy and perfect, and if I could get the whole thing tattooed on my back, I would, but I'm not that brave. Just saying. Um, but this is the Raven Edgar Allan Poe introduction by a series of Gilman Del, Del Taro, who is the director of Pan's Labyrinth. I am stoked. This is tales and poems and gorgeous. And the, the presentation of this edition is stunning. I am so in love, so happy. And I think it's the very last poem that is Annabelle Lee or in the middle somewhere. But anyway, yes, this is my baby. I picked it up because Halloween, Edgar Allan Poe, matching. Anyone who's seen The Raven with John Cusack, ugh, love that film. Love it. This was an altar buy. This means that one of my altars took my credit card <laughs> or my debit card and decided to go buy a book. And they didn't tell me what it was coming. And, um... Turns out this is what co was coming. This is Nisa Shawl Everfair, and this is a sci-fi novel, historical fiction about a neo-Victorian England talking about and exploring the come of Belgians to the Congo and the native population and how they adapted to the steam technology that was coming. So this is a neo-Victorian historical fiction, science fiction, steampunk novel about the takeover of the Congo, I think, if I'm correct. I love the cover. I'm very excited. I thank my part, my part, whoever they are, for picking it up. So happy. Now, here is a fun story time. I am one of those people who, when I go out in public, people seem to just... I'm not saying that people flock to me in, like, a good way. Like, oh my god, what's your name? No. It's like, people seem to have an opinion about what I'm doing, and I just seem to, like, exude the, uh, the openness that's enough that they think they can tell me their opinion. Not really sure why. So I went to a bookshop to waste some time between a visit with a friend and a doctor's appointment. And when I was there, I kind of just, I wandered around, I grabbed a coffee and I was, I really wasn't planning on buying anything, but then I saw this. This is the new Jim Crow and this is Mass Incarceration and the Age of Colorblindness by Michelle Alexander. I was not planning to pick this up at full price, but when I saw it and I read the first introduction and the steam started coming out of my ears of anger. I had to bring it home with me, but I didn't want to read it that day. But I knew whatever I was going to pick up, I was going to have to read in the car that day. So I was like, how am I going to just spend like five more dollars and not be too upset about it? Well, that's where the Suicide Squad came in. So I picked this book up. It is the novelization of the of the film, which I've now seen four times. And it is by David Ayer. Now I got to the cash register and the cashier was like, are you buying these as a gift for someone? And I'm like, no. And they're like, what kind of class are you taking? And I'm like, I'm not. And they're like, well, then why are you picking this up? Do I look like I need a reason? Like, what is wrong with you? And then he's like, Oh, and by the way, this is a great book. Tell whoever you're purchasing for, purchasing it for that they're really going to enjoy it.
the assumption that neither of these books were A, for me, B, by purchasing them of my own free will, and C, that I could com comprehend what this was about, obviously was in his mind, was really insulting and really terrifying. And the bookstore that is being mentioned, I'm not going to say who they are, but they're a bigger bookstore. Um, like, I mean, million dollar bookshop, they replaced my borders. I'm not a fan of them. And the fact that they sell mostly Christian books anyway, and then they have the audacity to assume that me, a 20 something white girl could not be buying a book based around the conversation of incarceration, race issues and other such things is really offensive. And I probably won't go back to that bookshop, regardless of the fact that they do have some decent deals on used books, no, not used books, on books that are overstocked. I won't go back because I was too insulted. And unfortunately, they've lost a client. We'll see if they know who's talking, being talked about or if any of you do. And if you do, enjoy going to that bookshop because they're a ripoff. Anyway, this I was sent by Sale Press. This is a memoir. I am so excited about this. It's blurbed by Meryl Streep and Steve Martin, and it is a half mystery, half memoir. The Future Tense Joys tells the story of Jessica Tisch's obsession with discovering the truth beyond a young woman's suicide and confronting her own demons along the way. This is Future Tense of Joy, and it is by Death Jessica Tisch. I am stoked. Really stoked. This I found for 50 cents, and I like left the thing on because I was so proud of myself. It's not normal, but that's fine. This is bipolar mania and de man mania and depression in American culture. Um, Expeditions by Emily Martin. And this is going to be a conversation about the obsession that American culture has with depression and bipolar disorder and the overdiagnosis. So I'm super stoked on that. Um, and I don't think that it's actually going to be... I think that there's a thing... The thing that I'm really curious about is I don't think that dep depression and bipolar are overdiagnosed particularly, but what I do think is that bipolar and depression are kind of used willy-nilly by people who aren't actually diagnosed as a way to express sadness or stress, and that's actually really detrimental to the mental health community and the stigma around mental health. Um, when you tell someone, oh, I was so depressed yesterday, and the truth is you were just really blah and didn't really feel like doing much, and you were just kind of sad, that's not the same thing as depression. It can be if you are diagnosed with depression or you are suffering from depression. But to use depression and bipolar as a synonym for stress or sadness is really, really detrimental. Um, I know I just said that, but it's it needs to be repeated a couple of times. Um, if you guys, so I do plan to kind of talk about that a little bit more in the future and potentially actually ex like expand a little bit on the idea of verbiage and words that are detrimental to the mental health community and how we can kind of stop that. Next book I found was this. This is Silk. It's by Paul Lally. I found it. It was a story about the Roaring Twenties and a young woman from Japan whose silk train is taken over by the mob and then she saves Al Capone's life. I'm very curious about it. It looks completely ridiculous, but the cover is adorable and it was like a dollar and I'm like, yes. So that happened. We'll see when I get around to that. I don't know. And then this is the other one that one of my alters picked up. Not picked up, but she entered a giveaway and she picked this up. This is another Mac book. This is The Fifth Petal by Brunania Barry. Actually, this one I will probably join Mac in reading. Mac is a huge fan of horror literature and psycho craziness, which I'm very, very proud of her that she's kind of kept her interest in that without fearing too much. However, her nightmares that make us afraid of the dark do get a little exhausting. That's okay. This is talking about a, so this takes place in modern day time where Salem, Massachusetts, women who are the ancestors of past witches who were burned in the Salem witch trial are starting to turn up murdered. And it's a murder mystery about that. So I am sort of excited about that. Well done, Mac. Well done. Now this one. Mm. This one I was bad. 
this one I was like really bad and um I love this book I've read it a few times I don't own it but I could never find a cover that I liked and that wasn't in mass market and so I just caved because this is the edition I really wanted it was kind of my celebration to myself uh, anyway so you guys who follow me on Instagram may have seen this and I asked you guys to guess what this book was and then I revealed the spine only and this is the silence of the lamb by Thomas Harris and this is the cover. Ah, I'm so obsessed with this cover. This is one of 200 copies signed by the artist, not the author. The author one was just ridiculously expensive. I love the texture and the feel. This is from Subterrain subterrane press this is the same people who published my version of soulless which i love so much i really believe that their books are gorgeous well worth the price and something really special to add to your collection so this is my latest special piece to add to my collection i'm very much in love with it it was definitely a splurge but i'm worth it Last but not least, I picked up a picture book because my cousin is having a baby and I went to a baby shop to pick up some baby shower gifts and I saw this and I bought it and then I thought about it and went, no, I'm not giving this to an infant. I want it. So this is Swan. This I really, really wanted. Anyway, this is The Life and Dance of Anna Pavlova and this is by Lauren Schneider and illustrated by Julia Mor Morstan and I love it. I haven't taken it out of the plastic yet because I'm nervous. Um... <laughs> So, shall we open it together? That's that's something to do? Shall we do that? I don't know. I feel like it's been shown on BookTube a few times, but for those of you who haven't seen it... Ah, taking it out of the plastic makes me so nervous. Ooh, it's a nice matte cover. I mean, that's some serious ASMR there. <gasps> and paper love! Yeah, this is gorgeous. Gorgeous. <gasps> oh, so happy. So yes, this will be added to my collection of books for small children that I have, or should I just say graphic books that have <gasps> the naked cover is the same. Guys, it's gorgeous. <gasps> okay, I'm good now. There's foiling on the wings. I'm not going to lie, I would consider getting that tattooed, no question, because that's beautiful, stunning. All right, guys, this again has been a longer video, but I think there were about 25 books, so there's really no way around that. 27 minutes to one minute a book? Yeah, there was really no way around that. But guys, I will see you guys in my next video. I will talk to you soon. 